And there's um, I want to open up a little bit different than we normally do. Normally, I would have you stand and we're going to do uh, some singing and all that, and then we'll go to prayer. And we're going to be doing our missions thing in just a few moments, but the Lord just really laid on my heart that we need to have some specific prayer this morning before we begin. Um, Sister Glenda has been going through uh, some difficult times with her eyes. She had the surgery and everything seemed to be fine, and then an infection came in. She had to have emergency surgery again last week. We're so glad that she's able to be with us, but she still has a ways to go. But we know that God is a healing God. Amen? Uh, we have uh, found out that some of the Gaskins fa uh, clan have been dealing with COVID. Apparently, it's wanting to come back up for a little bit. Um, and we're just rebuking that in the name of Jesus. Uh, but they've been uh, dealing with some of that. But then also, um, my wife's talking to Megan and was saying about how ever since this whole thing with Emma Brooke has come about, and they found out that Megan's going to be able to uh, be a, a donor for her. And uh, that, that surgery is coming up in less than a month. And uh, ever since they found that out, Satan has been attacking their family left and right. And we just need to put a stop to it. As a matter of fact, we're going to, uh, we're going to have something on Friday. We've already talked to Megan about this. Those of you who are, are interested and are willing, at what time do we say? At 7? At 7 o'clock on Friday, this Friday evening, if you're able, we're going to have a time of worship over at Megan and Jake Bilton's house. We're going to just be outside, it, it, assuming the, the weather cooperates with us, we're going to be outside, and we're not going to worry with bringing, you know, a whole bunch of instruments and, and setting up stuff, or whatever. We're just going to come together, and we're going to worship, and we're going to break every chain that Satan has tried to put upon that family, everything that Satan has tried to do to attack that family, to try to keep them down and try to destroy them in this whole situation. Because here's the thing, if we don't stand up for our church family, then we're not going to have anybody to stand up for us when we need them to. Amen? And so if you are able to come out on Friday, if you're not able, then fine. We completely understand. I don't know, we may go Facebook Live so that those of you who are not able to go, maybe you can even be worshiping at home uh, while this is going on. But we're just going to have, a, it's not going to be a preaching thing. It's not going to be an offering thing. It's not going to be uh, anything uh, you know, like that and, and structured like that, we're going to worship and we're going to pray and we're going to believe that the Holy Spirit is going to minister and is going to move in that family and is going to break the, this uh, bondage and is going to break these things that are coming against the family to try to destroy them. All right? Is anybody else in agreement with me on that? 
Okay, good. I know that we're, we're down a little bit in numbers today, but the thing is, you know, y'all still have voices and you can still speak up and you can still uh, uh, be in agreement with me. But, uh, but we're going to be doing that. And um, in fact, what I'm going to ask right now, Glenda, if, you would, uh, if you're able, if you would come up and then Miss Kathy, would you mind coming and standing for Megan and, and, and well, that whole, the Waltons is what I call them all <laughs> over there on Walton Hill, uh, Walton Mountain. If you'll just stand uh, in, in uh, their stead. And then um, Ms. Joyce, would you come up? I want you to stand uh, for, uh, for Stacy Wood. She's not here uh, this morning. And of course, you know, she's been battling with some things. I haven't heard lately what's going on as far as with her health. But um, uh, those of you who didn't know, uh, she had a, a mass in her lung that's actually trying to press against her heart. And we don't know anything yet. I, I haven't heard anything yet. I don't know if any tests have been run yet to uh, determine exactly what it is. But God needs to move and healing needs to take place. And I just want to ask you, uh, these, these were the specific ones that God laid on my heart that as we open up service today, uh, that I want to pray for them. And I want to believe that God's going to make a mighty miracle happen. But I want to ask you, if you have something that, or, or even somebody that you want to stand in for, I'm going to ask you to come up to the altar. Now, I, I know, you know, I may be going into some dangerous territory here because, you know, it, it may turn out that we might be here all day. But you know what? That's okay. I don't even mind. I know I have a sermon I am itching to preach. I know that God has laid something on my heart that I have a great desire to bring to you. But I also know that whatever my plans are, they can just go to the side. I'm so sorry. They can just go to the side. And they, we don't even have to ever pick them up because it's how the Holy Spirit is leading us. It's how God is leading us. That's what I want to happen in this service today. So if there's anybody else, I'm going to give you just a moment, but if there's anybody else you want to come stand either for yourself or for someone else, I want you to come forward at this time. We're going to open up with prayer in this way. And if, if you don't have somebody, if you'll just stand and uh, you can either come up and begin to lay hands on these as we pray or you can stay where you are as we, as, as we begin to pray. The musicians will be playing a little something here. But we're believing that God is going to move in this situation. Amen. We believe that God is a healing God. We believe that God is a delivering God. We believe that God is a providing God. We believe that God is a righteous God that hears the cries and the prayers of his people. And he is a good, good father. And he's going to answer the prayers of his people. Do you believe that today? Hallelujah. Well, if you will stand, and like I said, you can either stand and come forward or you can stand right where you are, whatever it is. But I want us to have prayer and I want us to believe that God is going to change some things in some lives today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together, church, as we open up today. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, God, for your healing power. I thank you, Father, that we can come to you with every petition. We can come to you with every need, Lord. And we know that in the name of Jesus, that we can stand boldly before the throne. You tore the veil, God, so that we can have access to you because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And God, we know that the stripes he bore upon his back were for healing. In Jesus' name, God, I pray for healing for my sister right now. Lord, the enemy can try to do whatever he wants to do, but he cannot prevail over the blood of Jesus Christ, over the promise that you have given us. And in Jesus' name, I speak healing to her eyes. In Jesus' name, I speak death to the infection, God. In the name of Jesus, not by my power, not by my might, but by your spirit, God. I pray these things in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, as my sister stands right now on behalf of the Gaskins and the Biltons, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will just touch them in all that they're going through. God, you've already shown them victories. You've already shown them how you're working, God. But, Lord, we need you to step in right now because the enemy's trying to bring discouragement. The enemy's trying to bring destruction. The enemy is trying to trying to break down their joy and their hope and their peace God but Lord you are the one who gives us peace you are the one who gives us peace in the midst of the storm you are the one who provides for our every need you are the one who brings healing to our bodies God Lord let it be so now in Jesus name take every care take every problem take every circumstance Lord and I pray that in the name of Jesus you will just cover it by the blood of Jesus Christ destroy the works of the enemy today in Jesus' name. Father, as my sister stands on behalf of Stacy, God, Lord, you see the way the enemy has come against her. 
you see the way the enemy is trying to destroy her but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and Lord we know by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can declare her healing God Lord you don't you're not going to heal her because we say so you're going to heal her because your word says so in the name of Jesus Lord we speak to her body and God pray that this mass will go that you'll begin to destroy it even now as we speak God in the name of Jesus let your will be done in this body and in this place today hallelujah Lord, we just want to thank you, God, for a brother who's going to stand in for his sister. God, you see what Sister Dan is going through. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will touch her body right now, Father, where she is in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you'll bring comfort and peace to her body. I pray that you will heal her of this, of this disorder, God, and that you will do a great and mighty work in the name of Jesus. We declare it, Father. Your word says where two or three are gathered together in your name, you're in our midst. God, we have come into this house in your name to bring you glory and bring you honor. God, would you just come into our midst and do the work today, Father, in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right. All right. Stretch your hands this way if you would. We need to be praying for uh, Brother Charles. He has blessed this church. He's been a blessing to this church for so many years. He has worked for this church. He has gone and visited and prayed with so many, probably each and every one of you at some point in your life, at some point in the time you've been here at this church. And he has been struggling. He's not able to be here today because of the way he's struggling in his body. But we are rebuking the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. We're also going to be lifting up Cindy today in the name of Jesus. Stretch forth your hand right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the man of God that you have have called and the, the works that you have done through him and through this ministry that you've called him to. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will touch Brother Charles as, as Sister Evelyn stands here, God, that you will touch Brother Charles and bless him, Father. Touch his body, strengthen his body, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as long as we have breath in our bodies, you still have a work for us to do. And I believe that with all my heart. God, would you just do the work in Brother Charles right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord, would you touch Cindy right now? Father, you see the, the situation she's going through. You see the battle she's facing. But Lord, you are far greater than all the battles that we're facing. You are far greater than any sickness, any problems, any, any burdens, God. Lord, we can bring our burdens to you, Father, and your Holy Spirit will take them from us. Lord, let us take on your yoke, for your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And we're believing for healing now in Jesus' name. Lord, even as he is at home right now, God, let him begin to feel the Holy Spirit burning inside of him, healing his body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I thank you so much for a sister who will stand for her brother, Father. Lord, I know that cancer is something that has affected every person at one point or another in this church, God. Lord, we know what the doctors say. We know what the reports say. We know what histories of prognosis may say. But God, we also know, Father, that your word says that by your stripes we are healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we're praying for healing now in the name of Jesus for Sister Beth's brother. God, that you will just touch him, that you will minister to him. God, let him begin to feel the Holy Spirit begin to burn inside of him right now. He may not even understand what's coming upon him. He may not even understand what's happening, but Holy Spirit, would you just begin to burn out that cancer now? Begin to burn out that cancer, Father. Lord, would you let your power just flow through through him, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that this will be a great miracle that will take place and great praises and testimonies will be able to be lifted up, God, because of the work you're going to do today, 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 in Jesus' name. Let it be so, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you standing in for someone? Satan, we bind you and we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. 
We see how you are coming against our sister, but you have no authority, for she is the property of the Lord Jesus Christ, who defeated you on Calvary so many years ago. You are a defeated foe. You are fighting a battle that has already been lost, but we refuse to allow you to continue to attack the children of God. We bind you by the power of the Holy Spirit. We bind you by the blood of Jesus Christ and command you to take your hands off of the children of the Most High God. In the name of Jesus, let her be free, God, from the attacks of the enemy. Lord, let her be free from the attacks of the way that Satan is coming against her, God. Strengthen her. Give her a new resolve. Give her a new purpose in you today, Father, in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who are you on this? Lord, I thank you, Father, that we know that you heal cancer. I know, God, that you heal all things. Lord, there is not a sickness that can come upon us that is greater than the stripes you bore upon your back. There is not a disease that can try to beset us that is not greater than the blood that was shed on Calvary. And Lord, we claim the promises of your word that says that by those precious stripes that we are healed in the name of Jesus. We speak healing into Pam today, God. Lord, as Crystal stands in her stead, we speak healing into Pam in the name of Jesus. We speak healing, God. Lord, cancer may try to come upon her. Lord, these different sicknesses may try to come upon her. But Lord, you are greater than all sickness. You are greater than all disease. You are the healer, God, in the name of Jesus. You are the healer. And we know that we can come to you with any sickness. We can come to you with any affliction, God. And you have all power and all authority to stop this sickness, to destroy these the germs, the bacteria, the cells, to destroy them in the name of Jesus. And we claim that promise. God, we're not asking for anything that you haven't already said is ours. God, we're not asking for anything that you haven't already said in your word belongs to us. All we're asking God, all we're praying now is that the healing that you promised will take place in this body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Church, let's pray together. Father, we just thank you, God, for all the works you have done. We thank you for all the things you are doing, Father. Lord, I have felt your presence this entire day thus far. Lord, I know your Holy Spirit is wanting to do something incredible in this house today. And Lord, we submit ourselves to you right now in Jesus' name. We submit ourselves to you, God, and pray that you will work through us, Father. Lord, I pray that you will heal. I pray that you will deliver. I pray that you will provide. I pray that you will break chains. I pray that you will bring encouragement. God, I pray you'll convict us of our sin so that we will want to live a holy and sanctified life. Lord, let this entire service do nothing but bring you honor and bring you glory through all that we do today, Father. Lord, I'm not asking you for you to send your spirit because your presence is already in this place. What I'm asking God is that it will be more God than just a touch. It will be more than just a good feeling. But God that we will see a momentum change in this church today in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit God take complete control of this place. Take complete control of this service. Lord help us to shake off our inhibitions and to focus solely upon you God that you can do the work in us that you desire to do in us today we glorify you we praise you let all that we do today bring you honor and bring you praise in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus Christ our Lord our Savior our everything amen 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 would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning hallelujah 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. You can be seated for just a few moments. Glory to God. Today is Mission Sunday. And Sister Glenda's asked if I would just come up and, and speak to you for a few moments uh, before we take up our offering. I'm not going to take a lot of time, but uh, I did want to mention uh, Brother Turner, who was here last week said he wanted to let you know that he greatly appreciated uh, all the prayers and the love offering. Uh, it was a great blessing to them, and uh, 
he said that he knew specifically that today was our mission Sunday, and so he wanted to ask you to please be praying for them. They're going through some trials, didn't get into what it is, didn't say what all's going on, but they're going through some trials. Let me tell you that anybody who is doing anything for the kingdom of God is going to face obstacles. They're going to face people that are going to oppose them. They're going to face problems. But be of good cheer, for Jesus Christ has overcome the world. Amen? And you will make it through, and he's going to make it through, but we're going to, uh, he wanted us to specifically be praying for him and ask that uh, you would lift him and his wife up as they get ready to uh, move forward in the next step uh, of their ministry. If you're not praying for our missionaries on a, on a regular basis, you need to be doing that. There are men and women all around this world, families all around this world that are trying to tell as many as they can in the short time that we have left that Jesus Christ is Lord that they don't have to continue to live in sin, but that they can live a sanctified and holy life, that they can live a life free of sin, and that they can have an eternity that is greater. Only the half has been told. Do you understand that? As much as we have heard about heaven, and I'm, I, I'm ready to preach today in case you haven't noticed that, but as much as we have heard about heaven, as much as we have seen in the Word of God, as much as it has been preached about the greatness of heaven, not even the half has been told. Amen? And the world needs to know that. The world needs to know. One of the arguments, I guess, that atheists will have about Christianity is the only reason that, that you're a Christian today in America is because you were born in America and we were, uh, or were technically a Christian nation. But if you'd been born someplace else, you would have been some other religion. Religion is just about geography. Well, that's why Jesus said, go. Because there's other countries that all they know about is Buddhism. All they know about is Islam. All they know about is Hinduism. And it's time that somebody goes and tells them that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen? And so you need to be lifting up our missionaries. You need to be praying for them. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, my boys to come. They're going to be receiving the Go offering today. And, you know, I was, I was thinking about this uh, this morning, actually. I thought, you know, we say a love offering. You know, we, we tend to say love offering. But, you know, any offering you give is a love offering. I don't want you to give out of obligation. I mean, if you've made a commitment, you've said, I'm going to give X amount each month and all that, fine. But I don't want you to give out of obligation. I want you to give because of the fact that you love God. I want you to give because of the fact that you love uh, the Word of God and you love the Word of God being preached and being taught all around the world. That's why I want you to give. Do you love Jesus? Do you love the Word? Do you love hearing about people that give their heart and life to Jesus Christ that are taken from the, the claws, uh, the grips of sin and darkness and are brought into new light? Are you, do you get excited? Do you get happy? Do you love to hear about people that were once so lost that people have given up on them, but now they are happy and now they are free because they have found Jesus Christ and have made, them, made him their Lord and Savior? Does that make you happy? Is that something you love to hear? No? All right. Well, we need to have an altar call right now then. We need to be excited when we hear about somebody that has given their heart and life to Jesus Christ. We need to be excited when we hear about somebody that was in sin but is now in, in, is saved and is now free from th that sin. That should be something we should be excited about. It should be something we should be happy about. So as we give today, boys, come on up. As we give today, I want you to give out of love not just for the missionaries themselves, but I want you to give out of love for the Word of God being preached all over the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to ask our, our true mission rep, Brother Cheryl Orvin, and everything that he and his wife have done uh, for missions. We uh, talk about the half only being told, but if you want to hear the other half, just go ask him. I'm sure he'll be happy to tell you about it and tell you about some of the things that God has done in his ministry and, some, and the number of lives that he's been able to, to reach for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we're going to ask him now, as he prays over the offering, to also pray for our missionaries. Brother, if you'll pray for, for our missionaries that are abroad, if you pray for our missionaries that... that I, I also want you to pray, brother, if you would, that God would call more missionaries. Because it's great for us to be able to give in an offering to help some missionary go someplace, but we need people willing to go. Wow. Y'all are quiet today. You are not going to like my sermon. All right. 
Brother Cheryl, if you would, would you pray over the offering today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you as you give today. And if you would stand, let's go to a time of worship as we're giving today. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my
remain standing for just a moment. There were a couple of prayer requests that I meant to mention, and I forgot to. Sister Mary Lambert had surgery on her back this past Friday. Uh, that's why uh, Wendy and them are not here, because she's needing 24-hour care. She Apparently everything went well, so we praise God for that. Everything went well, but if you've ever had back surgery, it's not something you just bounce right back from. So we need to continue to remember uh, Sister Mary. But then also, Brother Dwayne Crawford is not here today because he's been at the uh, hospital with his father. And um, I don't have a whole lot of details about what's going on. It sounds like that it's, it's not life-threatening, but, um, but I told him that we would have prayer. So I apologize for forgetting to mention those earlier. Can we just pray real quickly for these needs? Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's be praying for Sister Kathy's father as well. So uh, let's let's lift these needs up uh, in prayer today. Father, we come to you again, Lord. Lord, uh, forgive me for uh, for my lapse of, of memory, Lord, but I thank you, God, for reminding me about Sister Mary and about Dwayne's father and, and now about Sister Kathy's father. Lord, we're believing, God, in the name of Jesus, that your Holy Spirit is going to descend upon them and is going to touch them in Jesus' name. Lord, you see each and every need, and you see See exactly what needs to be done in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we pray right now, God, that you will minister, that you will move, that you will touch, Lord, that you will begin to do a work in each one of these lives, Father. Lord, we glorify you and we praise you because we know that you, you before we even spoke them, God, we know that you already had a plan. We know you already had the answer on the way, but God, we are coming together as a church family to lift up those that are, are suffering and those that are in pain and those that are needing healing healing God we're lifting them up today in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray amen 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 you could be seated for a few moments today I'm going to just ask our children uh, I'm, I'm not going to do a children's uh, sermon little devotional today but I'm just going to ask our kids if they would begin to make their way to children's church this morning we'll dismiss you so that you can uh, have time to do everything you need to do can we let our kids know how much we appreciate them this morning Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You got some good-looking kids with some good-looking hairdos. Praise the Lord. Sister Ed's leaving me. so No, we ain't done with music. We still got another offering. What's wrong with you? Now, are you able to come back up for a moment? If you're able. We'll, we'll even give you a moment to do a U-turn. No. No, we're... Um, we're going to ask for our regular tithe and offering uh, at this time. Our ushers will come, and uh, we're going to be doing a song in the key of C. Uh, just to let you know, we'll get to that in a moment. But uh, we want, want to make sure that we are being faithful in our giving. Let me take this moment real quick while our ushers to co are coming to tell you that our lock-in this past Friday was a huge success. Uh, zero calls to 911, which we're thrilled about. And um, there were nobody quit the church over it so that's great but i just want to thank brian and joy and tabitha and anna and james and everybody else that had anything to do with the lock-in uh they had a good time my boys were exhausted and i was thrilled about that yesterday morning i got some work done and so that was good but uh but it was a great time um brian wants to cancel the one that's scheduled for october but other than that uh they had a wonderful time and i uh, hope our young people had a, a great time as well i understand that uh brother ryan Ryan Wiggins went and did a devotion and the word I heard was that they were captured you had captured them but it was a lock-in where were they going to go so anyway uh, no but we're, we're just thankful for uh, what the Lord's doing in our young people amen amen let's have a, a, a word of prayer as we take up today's tithe and offering father we thank you for all your wonderful blessings we thank you for everything you have given us thank you for being our provider lord we pray in the name of jesus that you will minister to this offering multiply it many times for your use god and we give you glory and honor and praise and power in jesus mighty name amen amen god bless you as you give give me a key of c please holy spirit thou art welcome in this place holy spirit thou art welcome in this place omnipotent father of mercy and grace thou art welcome in this 
place. Come on, sing it unto the Lord. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. Come on, stand and sing it unto the Lord this morning. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. Come on, just sing it with me one more time today. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in you are welcome in this house today. You are welcome in this place today. Lord, we just ask that you will envelop us with your presence, that you'll envelop us with your spirit and with your power. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we praise you and we thank you and you are welcome in this house today. Lord, would you always, Father, Lord, let us always make you feel welcome. Let us always make you feel like that your presence is welcome in this house. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Remain standing if you would. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I was hoping to keep this jacket on. I don't see that happening today. I have felt the presence of Almighty God in this house ever since I have stepped outside of my door. <clears throat> at one point I was shaking it was feeling like I didn't know if my sugar was low or if something else was going on and then I realized that it was the Holy Spirit coming upon me and I believe that the word he has given me today is for this congregation and for these that are watching and listening online and I need you to stick with me this whole sermon and I need you to have an open heart and an open mind to what, not what the pastor is saying, but what the Spirit is saying today. It's not about my words. It's about His Word. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 1, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 16. And Paul is writing and he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That first part is what I want to focus on. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Almighty Father, I thank you for the presence that we have already felt in this house. God, I thank you for the anointing that you have rested upon me to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I am not ashamed of the word that I'm going to bring forth today. Lord, I pray that you will open our hearts and our minds to receive all that is spoken today. And God, let it be your word that comes through your vessel, that comes through your servant. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 You can be seated this morning. Pardon me. 
I want to speak to you for a little while today about pride in Pentecost. Pride in Pentecost. Today is Pentecost Sunday for those of you who do not know. We are Pentecostal for those of you who do not know. Today is June the 5th. And unless you don't have, the tele, don't have television, you don't have the internet, you don't go to the stores, you have not left your house over the past five days, you have seen things about pride. From June 1st up until today, I have been inundated with things concerning gay pride. I want to say this before I go any further. This is not a sermon that is about homosexuality. This is a sermon that's about Pentecost, but I need you to stick with me for this first part of it. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of what the Word of God says. I could care less if it's politically correct. I'm not a politician, so it doesn't matter to me. Gay pride, the movement for gay pride, I had to do some research about it, obviously, because I didn't know about it, but the movement of gay pride began in June of 1969 with what are called the Stonewall Riots. So there was a place called the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village in uh, lower Manhattan that uh, was a gay bar. And at the time, homosexuality was actually against the law. And uh, most gay bars were owned by, uh, uh, by the mafia, by un the underground, criminal underground. And so the police would use that as an excuse to go and to raid these bars. Well, on this particular night, uh, late June, I believe it was 28th or 29th of June of 1969, uh, there were about 10 policemen that went and raided uh, the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village. And these policemen uh, began to become very violent with some of the people that were there and they began to get violent back. They began to protest, and over the next four or five days, there was a great protest that was happening at that time, and thousands of people ended up becoming involved in this. Because of that, it sparked the gay pride movement. The very next year, in June of 1970, the very first gay pride parades, uh, which if you have seen any of those uh, on the Internet, you've seen pictures of them, please don't look at the pictures of these parades because they are filthy and uh, I, don't, I don't care if it's uh, men and men and women and women I don't care if it's a man and a woman they should not be going out in public and doing the things that the people do in these parades and they shouldn't be dressing that way but that's a whole other story but uh, the first gay pride parades happened in New York and Los Angeles and Chicago and San Francisco in June of 1970 in 1978 the rainbow flag became adopted as the symbol of for homosexuality. Now, I'm going to stop here for a moment. I'm going to take a little bit of a rabbit trail, but it's a, it's a structured, organized rabbit trail. Because here's the thing. We as a church have talked about for a while about how, uh, how uh, the homosexual movement has stolen the rainbow from us. But if you've actually done some research on this, and I, I, I was looking this up and I was doing some research and I've got excited in my spirit. Because if you do the research on this, the gay pride flag has six colors. It has red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. It's actually missing indigo because the, the regular rainbow has seven colors. Uh, uh, Roy G. Biv. How many of you remember Roy G. Biv from school? All right. And you know, no, that wasn't the guy that was on the football team. It was the rainbow. And so uh, Roy G. Biv. But the gay pride flag only has six colors. Now, the reason why this is significant is because of the fact that everything that God has for his church, Satan tries to make a copy of and tries to, to make something that is similar, but it's always lacking from what God originally had made. The number six in, in Hebrew and biblical numerology is the number for man. In fact, if we read in the Bible in Revelation when it's talking about the Antichrist, it says that he will, he will be a man and that the number of his name shall be 600 three score and six or six 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 as we know it as because the the antichrist and the dragon and the false prophet and i don't want to go this far into this but i'm, I'm going to say this it, they're the unholy trinity there's three of them six 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 but the thing is they are not god they are nothing but man they are carnal they are incomplete that's what the number six means in biblical and hebrew numerology it means it represents man it represents that which is incomplete and it represents that which is carnal. 
That's what the number six represents in, Bibli- in, in Scripture. And so that's the reason why we have the unholy trinity with the dragon and the antichrist and the false prophet, but the number is six, 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 because they're not perfect. They're not complete because they're not God. They're a shabby copy of what God is. They're a shabby copy of what the trinity is supposed to be. I don't know how many of you remember. I'm not going to get on this sermon, but I don't know how many of you remember back in the day when you were doing the... Uh, uh, the mimeograph copies and you would have the original and you'd go and you make a copy and, and, and you uh, had to turn the drum and it was that purple and it smelled so cool and all this but the copy was never as clear it was never as complete it was never as perfect as the original amen and so when we take a look at this and we see the number six represents man the rainbow only has six colors my friend the promise God has given us is complete it is holy it is righteous it is everything that is God. The number seven in in biblical and Hebrew numerology represents God because it is completeness. It is perfection. It is holiness. So don't be worried if you see somebody trying to wave a flag for gay pride. Say that's just a shabby copy of what God has given to me, of what God has promised me because he's given me the complete promise. (laughs) Hallelujah. I could preach that all day. I haven't even gotten through my intro yet. Here we go. Okay, back to what I was saying. That was adopted in 1978. In 1999, wonderful man by the name of President Bill Clinton. He and his lovely wife declared for the first time that June would be considered Gay and Lesbian Pride Month in 1999 and in 2000, his last two years in office. President George Bush made no declaration or proclamation. Think what you want to think about him, but he did not. President Barack Obama declared that June would be LGBT, go from gay and lesbian pride month to LGBT pride month every year from 2009 to 2016. That's where it became a norm. That's where it became, this is the way it's going to be the status quo. Now, the guy in office now, I have a hard time even saying his name when I go to the pump, I'll tell you because I feel like I'm cussing. But anyway, President Biden has declared for uh, 21 and 22 for June to be LGBTQIA plus Pride Month. Somebody's going to name their kid Litbiquia. Somebody is going to do it. And I will have to smack that parent. But anyway, but he has gone and he has declared LGBTQIA MOUSC Pride Month for, for June of 2021 and 2022. You can't go to the store without hearing something about uh, LGBT pride. You can't go uh, turn on the television without seeing something about pride. I was going through, I turned on my uh, Amazon Fire Stick and an advertisement came up about Showtime and said queer to stay and everything was in rainbow colors. I went to Walgreens yesterday and I saw a box of Skittles and the Skittles were all white and the package was white and they said we believe the rainbow that really counts in this month is your rainbow and so we are getting rid of ours to support yours. Everywhere you turn we're seeing about gay and lesbian pride. They are very proud of the lives that they are living. They are very proud of what they have decided that they are. They're very proud of it and you're not going to get through this world unless you just lock your doors and just stay at home you're not going to get through this uh, the, the United States of America in the month of June without hearing something about gay pride without hearing something about it and my question to you is this today is the day of Pentecost today is Pentecost Sunday where is our pride in Pentecost Where has our pride gone in being Pentecostals? We can say, okay, we're proud to be a Christian, and we can put a fish on the back of our our car, or we can fly a Christian flag somewhere around our house. We can say that we're a member of a church and, and all that. But where is our pride about being Pentecostal? You see, we have gotten to a place where we've become complacent about who we are, folks. We are not just Christians. We're not supposed to be just Christians. We're supposed to be Holy Ghost filled and empowered. Christians, men and women of God that are full of the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to be tongue talking. We're supposed to be out in the spirit. We're supposed to be running the aisles. We're supposed to be shouting and praising with all that we have in us. We're supposed to be the loud ones that make everybody else feel uncomfortable. We're supposed to be that. That's what we are as Pentecostals. But where is our pride in Pentecost now? 
We have Pentecost Sunday. And there will be preachers all across this country that are going to be preaching about the Holy Ghost and preaching about Pentecost. And oh, Jesus, thank you for the Holy Ghost. When I was giving my scripture, Brother Ryan asked me, he said, let me guess, you're going to be preaching out of Acts chapter 2. And I said, no. Everybody else is. I'm not doing it. Normally I would have. Where is our pride in being Pentecostals now? My wife and I had the pleasure and the privilege and the honor of going on the prayer ride, a prayer from, from the heart of South Carolina this weekend. Friday morning we met in Hopkins, South Carolina, which is the geographical center of our state, along with 100 or so, 100 plus other IPHC people from uh, all across uh, South Carolina conference and also the Spirit Life conference. We even had uh, about a dozen members of uh, the Prayer Mountain Church in South Korea. That's Dr. Cho's church of over 750,000 members in South Korea, the largest Pentecostal church, the largest church in the, in the world. And these people at Prayer Mountain, they will literally, there is somebody praying 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And when I say somebody, I don't mean you just have Joe over here praying. I'm talking thousands of people at every moment of every day that are praying, that are interceding, not just for their own needs, but for the needs of the entire world for the needs of the kingdom of God and some of them were there and we met in Hopkins at a, at a park in Hopkins South Carolina and we all prayed and had worship together and had some time together we, we poured out some elements fire water oil and all, uh, several other things I won't get into all that right now but we poured out several things and each time that it was poured out there was a declaration that was made by the power and through the authority of the Holy Spirit and, and, and the power of Jesus Christ's uh, blood there was a declaration that was made for each and every element and then we all went on these different routes and and i don't remember how many stops we had it was four five six stops that we stopped and we would go to different churches we went to the turbyville uh home for children we went to the uh the uh, South Carolina conference offices we went to the tabernacle and prayed over camp meeting and we poured out these things and and uh, and we ended up coming here we actually stopped our last stop was here at Oak Grove and we poured out these elements because I said you will be stopping at my church and we're going to pray over our church and over our community but the reason I bring all this up is this when we were at the park a young man had a guitar and he began to play and we all began to sing, and we all lifted up our voices. And guess what? We weren't the only ones in the park. And I was looking around, and I was seeing people walking and doing this as they were walking. And I thought, I wonder what they're thinking about us. After Hopkins, we actually went to the state capitol. And we're in the rotunda of the state capitol. And the representative McCravey, is that right? Representative McCravey was the one that was able to facilitate it. We actually went through the governor's office and we were able to pray. We went up into the house and we were able to walk between the desks and lay hands on the, the chairs and the desks and pray for the representatives that were, were there. We weren't able to get into the Senate chamber, but we were able to go to the Senate chamber and pray over all the senators that would be in there. But we started off with, they said, let's have a word of prayer as we begin. And we were in the rotunda of, of, the, uh, of, of the Capitol building. And let me tell you, it was not a... Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be here at the Capitol, God. It's been such a great time. Voices were raised, and the acoustics made it even better. These people said, let's begin to pray. And as he's still giving instructions, people began to pray. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. And people began to speak in tongues and people began to pray. And I know those security guards thought we had lost our ever-loving minds. I know that the page that was all smiley and all happy as we were going through the governor's office saying, we're so glad to have you all here today. And then we prayed. I know they thought, oh, maybe we're not so glad after all. I know that they had to think that we were crazy. But let me tell you what we had at that place. We had Pentecostal pride. We were 
were not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were not ashamed of what the, the third member of the, of the Trinity, of the Godhead, we were not ashamed of what the Holy Spirit is doing in us and wants to do th through us. We spoke in tongues and we didn't worry about what other people were thinking. We, we lifted up our voices. We lifted up our hands and we weren't concerned about what other people were thinking. Why are we so concerned about it when we're in the church and we're surrounded by other people that are supposed to be feeling the same way, that are supposed to be thinking the same way? Why is it that we've gotten so quiet in our prayers? I know you might be saying, well, preacher, the Lord can hear me whether I'm whispering or whether I'm loud. Yes, he can, but I want to make sure that the enemy hears us as well. And I want to make sure that those around us hear us, that they know that we are not ashamed. We're not ashamed of the word of God. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Everyone. It's not something to be ashamed of. I know some people use the excuse of pride cometh before a fall. So we don't want to be proud in Pentecost. We, you know, we get on these things and we don't even bother to research it or study it. Oh, pride. No, we can't have any pride. No, you're not supposed to be consumed with self-pride. Let me tell you something. I was talking with Brother Greg and Sister Tanya before service about the fact that instead of doing just regular devotions for about the past month or so, we've been teaching the boys Scripture every, every night. They have a, a Scripture that we'll, we'll teach them, we'll uh, have them memorize it. And, and, of course, they're competing with each other to see who can me uh, remember it first. And, and we also explain to them what each Scripture means because the Word doesn't do any good for you just to report it or, or just uh, to um, speak it out by rote and and just by memory, if you don't even know what the word is saying. So we explained to them what the word means. And I was so proud as I was telling them about the number of scriptures that our boys have learned and, and the desire that they have to learn those scriptures. And you might be thinking, oh, here he goes again, talking about his great boys. Yup. <laughs> and you ain't going to stop me neither. Because as long as my boys are doing things that are going to be edifying their, their spirit and are going to be edifying their relationship with Jesus Christ, I will be proud as a peacock and strut all over this house about it. As many kids as we've got that are being sucked into the devil's hell, as many kids as we've got that are being sucked into drugs and alcohol and pornography and sex and homosexuality and, and all these and suicide and all these other things, as many kids as we have that are in homes that their parents don't even know that their child is on the brink of taking their own life and spending eternity in a devil's hell because they've never known Jesus Christ. I'm gonna be proud that my boys know who the who Jesus Christ is. I'm gonna be proud that my boys know what the word of God has to say so don't sit here and tell me oh no we can't have pride as Christians we can't we're just not supposed to have pride in ourselves you know who else I've got pride in I got pride in who my God is I got pride in who the Holy Spirit is I've got pride in who my Savior is I've got pride in what the fact that the, what the Holy Spirit does in my heart but the problem is this we want to get on our high horses and we want to say well we're not supposed to be proud we're not supposed to you know pride cometh before a fall and you're just saying that to justify your own shame and cowardice when it comes to your worship when it comes to your outward worship and prayer you know what satan did the exact same thing he took scripture he turned it out of context and tried to throw it at jesus when he was tempting jesus in the wilderness don't sit there and try to use scripture to explain why you're just sitting on the pew with your hands folded why you're saying well that's just not for me that's just not my thing let me tell you what the bible says in acts chapter 1 verse 8 but ye shall receive Power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Power, dunamis power, explosive power, power to move, power to move within the authority of God is what that word dunamis means. Power to move within the authority and, and, and the name of God. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Look at what happened to the disciples when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Peter, who was a man that just a, a little while before was denying, just, just uh, 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 10 days before was denying that Jesus Christ, he even knew who he was, that he walked with him, that he traveled with him, that he saw the healings that had just happened the night before when he cut off the centurion's ear and Jesus picked it up and put it right back on the guy's head. And he denied that he even knew Jesus. Suddenly the Holy Spirit 
Spirit comes upon him. And he steps out there when everybody's trying to make fun. Everybody was mocking them. Everybody was saying they were drunks. Everybody was saying they were crazy. And Peter could have said, guys, we need to kind of tone this down a little bit. People are going to think bad things about us. How are we going to grow our church if everybody thinks bad things about us? We need to just act like we just kind of fit in with everybody else. We just need to assimilate. He didn't say that. He said, these men are not drunk as you suppose I mean, this is but the third hour of the day but this is that which was foretold that in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh and he began to preach and thousands came to Jesus Christ because this man said I'm not going to be ashamed of what the Holy Spirit has put in me there is a boldness that comes upon you when you are filled with the Holy Ghost there is a power that comes upon you when you're filled with the Holy Ghost and we've got power filled churches supposedly power filled churches churches that have just have decided they're not going to be proud of the Pentecost the heritage that they have they're not going to be proud of the Holy Spirit that's inside of them well it's a different time brother it's a different time and we need to make sure that we're not turning the world off of course the world is going to be turned off to the things of God why are we trying to make the things of God more attractive to the world when the world is not attracted to the things of God. The only way that we can make the things of God, holiness, righteousness, the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, prophesying in the name of the Holy Spirit, but doing these things, the only way we can make that more popular to the world is if we take away from what it truly is. I've told you before that if you have something that is perfect that is complete if you add to it or if you take away from it it becomes less than perfect the perfection of the holy spirit and the baptism of the holy spirit does not become even more perfect when we add fog machines and concert lights The perfection of the Holy Spirit and the power thereof does not become more perfect if we open up a coffee bar in the foyer. The perfection of Pentecost. That's a sermon title right there. The perfection of Pentecost and of the power of the Holy Spirit does not become more perfect when we stop preaching things that make people feel bad about the way they're living. All you have done is you have put a blemish upon what God has given us. And you might say, well, brother, I'm just not into that. That's just not me. And my question is why? I want you to think about this for one moment. When you get to heaven, when you open your eyes for the first time, and you realize that the light that is causing your eyes to feel blinded almost, that your eyes are having to adjust to, is not from the sun, but is from the glory of Jesus Christ, of the Lamb of God. And you open your eyes and you see before you your precious Savior. Hands open, arms open, scars through his hands, a smile upon his face that can't even be explained. And he says, Welcome home, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. How many of you are going to say, well, ain't that some? Thanks, Jesus. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, yeah, excuse me. I'll just get right by you and go right into the joys of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's going to be a great time. Here comes eternity. <laughs> Seriously. How many of you all going to go, huh? Well, okay, Jesus. Show me my mansion. If you ain't shouting, you probably ain't going. 
if you don't fall on your knees and begin to weep with great joy, you probably aren't going to be going through in the first place. What would it be like if you got married and you're standing there and the minister asks the bride, do you take so so da, 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 till death do your part? The groom smiling, looking in the eyes of the bride, and she goes, Yeah. All right. Is it time to eat yet? Because I'm starving and this dress is really hot. Can we get this moving? How many of you guys are gonna say, Oh, that's my baby? <laughs> you can be like, hold on a second, preacher. We get that ring back. Hold on a second, preacher. I hope you ain't cashed that check yet. Because this may not be happening right here. Do you really think that God has sent the power of the Holy Spirit, but ye shall receive power? After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Do you really believe that He sent that power to you and then said, now, shh. You can talk about it, just don't do it too loud. We don't want to offend anybody. You know, don't, don't mess with anybody's sensitivities. You know, we don't want it to be to where we're looking foolish. We don't want to be looking like a bunch of, of, of weirdos or anything because, you know, we need them to come into church so that they'll pay tithes so we can get a bigger church so that we can get more people in so they can pay tithes so we can get a bigger church so we can get more people coming in so that the preacher can get a book deal or, or, you know, or whatever the case is. He didn't do that. He said you're going to receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you're going to be witnesses. You're going to be telling people what the Holy Ghost has done. When you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's going to be more than you just going, wow, well, that was a great feeling. Boy, wasn't that a nice service? Wasn't that a great time? You're going to be saying, I can't wait to tell people about what God has done for me. When I was filled with the Holy Ghost at you camp at the age of nine, I couldn't wait until my parents came and picked me up a couple of days later and brought me home so I could tell them, let me tell you what Jesus Christ did for me. We didn't have cell phones. We weren't allowed to go use a camp phone except for in emergencies. And so I had to sit there and hold on to that until it was time to go and tell my mom and dad, I've been baptized by the, by the fire and by the power that we hear about in Acts chapter 2. All the things I've seen happening in the church where people lay hands on people and they're healed and they're, they're changed and they go out in the spirit and they run the aisles and they speak in tongues and they prophesy. I now have that power residing in me. Where is our pride in Pentecost today? Why aren't we proud of what God has done? Why aren't we proud of what God is wanting to do? Why do we get so quiet when it comes to our worship? Why do we get so quiet? Well, well, we don't want anybody to think we're weird. You can think you're I don't, I already think you're weird. Do you already think I'm weird? I believe you do. Who cares what everybody else thinks? Who cares if anybody thinks you're strange? Who cares if any, well, they're just being showy. Brother, if you had the power of the Holy Spirit, you'd be wanting to show it too. Well, they're just trying to get attention. I can tell you this, every, every single time I've ever spoken in tongues, it's not been to bring attention to me, but it's been to bring attention to the one who empowered me to speak in tongues in the first place. Every time I've gotten loud in my prayers, it's not been because of the fact I wanted everybody to hear how great and glorious my prayers are, how Shakespearean they may be. It's because of the fact that there was an excitement that was building up inside of me. And when you get excited, your voice begins to go up in volume. You ever done that before? You've been talking to your partner, been talking to your, uh, your wife or your husband or your friend or your, your pal, your chum, and, and all of a sudden they go, you need to just tone it down a little bit. You're getting a little bit too excited. But you don't understand the size of the deer I just killed. But you don't understand how important this five-star recruit to the Clemson football team is. But you don't understand how awesome this brand new car is that I bought. Or how big the fish was that I caught. Or how good looking my girlfriend is. You don't understand. My friend, you don't understand what the Holy Spirit has done in me. 
You don't understand the changes that he's made in me. You don't understand the chains that have fallen at my feet because of his power. You don't understand the change that has happened in my life, in my heart, in my mind, in my very thought process because of the Holy Spirit. And I will shout it from a mountaintop and I don't care if anybody wants to listen to it or not because I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is a power of God unto salvation. I am not ashamed of the fact that my Father has created me the way that he has created me. I'm not ashamed of the fact that the Holy Spirit has empowered me to go and to preach the gospel, to sing the gospel, to pray for people and for things to happen as we pray. I'm not ashamed of it. Luke chapter 9, verse 26. <coughs> Musicians, if you want to come at this time. Luke chapter 9, verse 26. The words of Jesus Christ Himself. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Here's the thing. I know this church. We have our moments. We have our moments where our services where the Holy Spirit takes over and it's just a great, wonderful time and people are crying and shouting and praising the Lord and all that. And let me tell you this also. I love, love those intimate worship moments where nothing's having to be loud. And I've just got my hands raised. And I'm just basking in his love and in his power and in his glory. I love those times. Tears streaming down my face. I literally have nothing to say because I don't want to disrupt the spirit. I love those times. But to everything, there is a season. There is a time for those quiet, intimate moments. There is a time for you just to have your hands lifted, eyes closed, and just saying, I love you, Lord. And there is a time for you to pick up a trumpet and declare with a loud voice that Jesus is Lord over your life, that Jesus is Lord over your household, that Jesus is Lord over this church. There is a time and a place for that. Now, I don't believe, it, it, I don't believe in, in doing it just to be showy. And I've known some people that I hear them getting louder in their prayers the louder somebody else prays because all of a sudden they can't hear themselves so they get louder. And they want everybody else to hear them. It becomes almost a screaming match. But the thing is, you can feel that in the Spirit. If you're, if you're baptized in the Spirit, you can. I don't know about when you're not baptized in the Spirit, but uh, when you're baptized in the Spirit and, and that... that uh, what some preachers would call wildfire where it's like you're kind of preempting the Holy Spirit it's like Lord I know you were wanting to take me over here anyway so I'm just going to go meet you over there and you come whenever you're ready you can feel that in your in your spirit when somebody's doing it for show when somebody's doing it for attention when somebody's doing it because they want the focus to be on them you can see that you can tell but you can also tell when you've got somebody who was so bound by sin and oppression and they were they just couldn't even move and it felt like that not only were they not moving forward they weren't even moving backward they were just going straight down like they were just going to go into oblivion and something happened in their in their spirit and God freed them and those chains all just completely disappeared and the the prison bars shook and the door opened and they were free from all of their bondage you can feel that in the spirit too when that person begins to pray when that person lifts up their hands and begins to praise God and begins to shout and begins to give glory unto God. You can feel that in your spirit as well because that's a bona fide praise. That's a bona fide testimony of somebody saying, look what the Lord has done for me. 
why are we so afraid? Why are we so afraid to let our Pentecost show? Preacher, I've just never been that way. Then I, I've got to wonder, have you ever really been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Because let me tell you, it changes you. Preacher, I used to be that way. I just, I've gotten old. I don't do it anymore. Don't even get me started about that mess. If there is breath in your body, you can still praise God with everything that is in you. I just don't have the strength to do it anymore. Listen, there have been times that I have gotten behind a pulpit. I was sick as a dog. I couldn't even hardly stand up. Times that I have literally preached while leaning against the pulpit. But God empowered me and that dunamis power stirred up inside of me. And I was suddenly able to preach. Had strep throat. Couldn't even get three or four words out without having a coughing fit. Or sounding like there was any power behind it. But as soon as I began to preach the word, suddenly everything amplified. And everything began to go forward. And I preached as if I, there was absolutely nothing wrong with me. Don't tell me that, oh, I just don't have the strength for it anymore. Or, I'm just too old or that's the way it used to be or I'm going to let the younger kids do it. You still have the power inside of you then you still need to be given God glory. You still need to be given Him praise. You still need to be lifting Him up in your worship. Don't be ashamed of who the Holy Spirit is in you. Don't be ashamed of being Pentecostal. Instead, you need to stand up and you need to glorify God and you need to call out His name and you need to praise Him with everything that is in you. Let your shout arise rise one more time and watch the walls of Jericho fall in the name of Jesus. Stand church. That I just said stand up and let your shout go out and let it let it cry out and watch the walls of Jericho fall and I heard amen. Well preacher don't get on to me I'll worship the way I want to. Yep you sure will. And the walls will stay standing. This is not fair because I did not intend, I did not think that it was going to get this hard. I did not think I was going to be this harsh with y'all. And I'm not apologizing, but it's not fair. The Lord should have warned me. You want your walls to keep standing, pocket your praise. You want to see miracles. You call it. You call out. You shout. You glorify God. I may have made every single one of you in this house mad at me. And if I did, I love you anyway. Like I said, I'm not apologizing because there's not a thing I've said today that isn't scriptural. There's not a thing I haven't said today, or I've said today that goes against the Word of God. There's not a thing I've said today that isn't what God has impressed in my heart, what I believe with everything that is in me. I don't believe in making anything up. I don't believe that we need to fake the Holy Spirit. I don't think we teach tongues. I think they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. But when the Spirit gives the utterance, you've got to open your mouth and let it fly. You've got to open your mouth and allow the Spirit to speak through you Heavenly Father I come to you right now thanking you for Pentecost I thank you for the day that the, the scriptures, the prophecies were fulfilled, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I thank you, God, that you have filled me with your precious Holy Spirit because now I have a power residing in me that doesn't just get me through from day to day, but makes me an active participant in the spiritual battle for the lives of those who do not know you as their Lord and Savior. I have a power that resides in me today, not for my pride, not for my, uh, for my recognition, but for your recognition, God. There is a power that resides inside of me today that gives me the boldness to be able to preach, to be able to pray, to be able to lay hands on the sick and believe that they're going to be healed, to be able to lay hands on those that are oppressed and believe that they're going to be freed, and to lay hands on those that are bound in chains and believe that they're going to be delivered. And it's not by my might or by my power, but it's by your spirit, God. 
And I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you will shake up Oak Grove. I pray, God, that you will shake us. God, get us out of our comfort zones. Get us out of this this place of complacency, God. Lord, if we're afraid that people are going to talk about us or look at us weird, God, get that fear out of us. We, We rebuke that fear in the name of Jesus. Lord, if we're ashamed because, oh, well, I'm just not a loud person and I I don't want to look like a fool. God, help us to be like David who went out dancing in the streets. Here he was, the king. He was royalty and yet he threw off all of his other garments, was just in his uh, undergarments and was outside and was praising you and worshiping you, God. God, help us to get that kind of a pride of the Holy Spirit. Help us to take that kind of a pride of Pentecost, God. Help us to realize that if the world can be proud of the sin and the debauchery and the abominations that they participate in, that the church needs to be even more so proud of the spirit and the power that resides inside of us because of your grace and because of your mercy. God, would you shake us up? Shake us up and give us a fresh desire for Pentecost. Give us a fresh desire for an outpouring. Give us a fresh desire, God, for a new anointing to come upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm just following your unctioning. Lord, I dismiss this congregation today. And as they go to their homes, I pray, Lord, that you will speak to their hearts and minds. I pray you'll show them in your word the things I've said today. I pray, God, that all complacency or shame or fear, Lord, that it will be removed as a surgeon removing a mass. That it will be cut clean from us by your Holy Spirit power that it will no longer be a part of us God and as we go home on this Pentecost Sunday let us take time in our prayers and devotions at home to lift you up and to glorify you Lord forgive us for our fears forgive us for our complacency forgive us for our cowardice forgive us for our shame and let you always be magnified and glorified in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you for being here today. I pray that you take what I've preached this morning and let the Holy Spirit deal with you in your hearts and in your lives. God bless you.